Hi friends, welcome to Azure Content. This is part 31 in Azure Data Factory Real-Time Scenarios playlist. In this video, we will learn how to query pipeline runs in Azure Data Factory based on certain input filter conditions. So let's see the requirement in details. So basically, we want to fetch the pipeline execution details, which is present in the monitor section in pipeline runs you can get all the details of the pipelines which has been uh, executed within certain period of time so you can apply multiple filters for example you can apply the end time range here uh, from the last 24 hours whatever pipelines has been executed it will be displayed if you choose last 30 days it will be displaying all the pipelines which has been executed from the last 30 days and then you can apply filter based on the pipeline name Okay, so for example, if I have to see the pipeline execution details of this pipeline called set value, and if I select that, I can see all the pipeline execution details of this particular pipeline within last 30 days. So from here, you can apply multiple filters and then you can simply export to CSV and it will be downloading a CSV file which has all the details present in the form of tabular structure. So basically this is the simplest way to get all the data just apply the filters that you want and then export to csv and you will be getting all the data in the tabular format and now we will talk about the other way to achieve the same thing using rest api call so let me go to the azure documentation so i will be sharing the link of this documentation in the description of my video so here you can see this is the rest api url that we need to call in order to get all the pipeline runs based on certain input conditions so we need to provide all the details for example subscription id resource group name data factory name and then it will query the pipeline runs using this query pipeline runs api and in the query parameter we have api version as well and if you notice this is a post method so certainly we need to provide some request body so if we go down these are the request body that we can provide where last updated after and last updated before are the required fields which means you cannot skip this so we need to mandatorily give these two values and other than that there are continuation token filters and order by these three request bodies are not mandatory if you want to apply some additional filters if you want to order by some uh, parameter then you can apply these but these are not mandatory ones the only mandatory ones are last updated after and last updated before so the format in which this request body should be passed is also provided here as an example so you can see this is the example so in the format of json we need to provide the request body so let me copy this and keep it handy in a notepad so here are some dummy values in this subscription id resource group name so i will replace it with my details of my ADF. So let me copy my subscription ID and let me replace it here. And then let me copy the resource group name. Let me zoom in here. And the resource group name would be pasted here. And then the ADF name is anu hyphen ADF. So here we need to give that. And our base URL is ready with which we will be making the REST API call. So I have copied the base URL. So the same will be used in the web activity. So let me create a new pipeline and then let's call a web activity. Let's drag and drop this in the pipeline canvas. And then in this settings, we will apply all the necessary things. So first of all, let me provide the URL here. So I have already updated the URL with all the details of my ADF and then we need to select the method. So as we have seen, it is a post method. You can see the same here before the URL, we can see post method is defined here. And then here in the body section, we need to provide the request body. So let's update the values here. So this is from the documentation. I'm just going to replace it. Uh, I want the data from past 30 days. So these were the mandatory fields that we need to provide in the request body as we have seen in the documentation. And then we need to provide the filters condition. This is not mandatory, but if you want to filter out only certain 
conditions for example if you want to filter out all the execution details which are succeeded all the pipelines which has been succeeded so then you can provide the operand accordingly or else if you want to filter out based on the pipeline name then you need to provide the operand like pipeline name operator equals and then value is the pipeline name so for example uh, if i see my monitor section so you can see in the last 30 days we have two instances of this pipeline called sort array elements okay so let me copy this name and let me paste it here so uh, for now let me select last 30 days so i will be selecting 26th september so we will get the details of the pipeline execution of sort array elements pipeline from last 30 days so we are expecting that it should be providing us two execution details because uh, here are two instances of this pipeline that has been run uh, from the last 30 days so let me go to the web activity here and in the request body we will paste this uh, request body where we are expecting the pipeline execution details from last 30 days for this particular pipeline called sort array elements then let's go down so here we have authentication where we will provide system assigned managed identity and in the resource option we have to use this particular part of the url which will act as the resource for authentication so management.azure.com will act as the resource that will get us the details basically that will do the authentication so let me now debug and we are expecting that it will fetch out two execution details of sort array elements pipeline because we have seen that there are two instances of this pipeline so yeah web activity has been succeeded let's see the output here so you can see this is one json starting from here till here this is one json so that means this is the execution details of one particular instance and then here you can see there is another json this is the execution details of the second run and here you can see there is no more json so basically in the last 30 days there are two execution of this sort array element so you can see the pipeline name here and then you can see the run id and the parameters that has been used to debug the pipeline so we have given this array as the parameter as the parameter that is 52 91 and 2 and then this has been invoked manually with the help of manual triggers we have run this pipeline and then in the second json you can see similar kinds of information is present here so basically this pipeline has executed two times in the last 30 days so now this was one scenario where we have applied the filters based on the pipeline name so how can we know that what are the kinds of operands that we can use in this request body so in the same documentation we need to search what are the different types types of operands that we can use so you can see in the run filter parameters in the filter section if we go here you can see operands and if we go into the uh, run query filter operand you can see all the kinds of operands that we can use just now we have used pipeline name and we have given equals operator and we can also apply filter based on activity name based on activity run end then latest only pipeline name all these kinds of filters we can use i am going to demo one more thing that is status so what i want is i want the pipeline names and the details of all the pipelines uh, which has been executed since first of say january 2023 and uh, till today so operand name would be status i have copied from here and then if status is equals to success so we cannot just assume that status value is success we need to cross check from here so you can see in this monitor section you can see the status values are either failed or succeeded so it's not success it's succeeded so let me copy it from here and again let me go into this web activity settings instead of success we will be using succeeded so we will get all the list of pipelines which has been succeeded from 1st of january till today okay so let's debug this pipeline 
let's wait for the pipeline execution to be completed so usually in production we will get more data but here i have not set up any triggers or scheduled any pipeline so so you can see these are all the pipeline execution that has status equals to succeeded and you can see all the details of pipeline name the parameter that has been used to trigger the pipeline and then all the details that we need similarly you can get all the details here okay so i do not have any scheduled trigger in this adf so there might be very few number of runs so similarly we can also see all the failed pipelines so here instead of succeeded i will just use failed and if we debug yeah so let's see the output so you can see we have the pipeline named pl underscore json to sql we have something called random number so these are uh, the recent runs you can see here in the monitor section as well random number and pl underscore json to sql these two has been failed recently and it is showing up in the output of this web activity so this is how you can use the rest api to query all the pipeline runs in azure data factory based on certain input conditions